All right, so I thought it would be helpful to look at some of the different examples in the appendix at the end of chapter one. And I am looking at some problems on page 45. So the first one we're gonna start off with is question two, where we have an Excel file called science and engineering jobs. And it shows that the number of jobs in thousands in the year 2000 and projections made for 2010 from a government study. So what you're being asked to do is to compute the projected increase from the 2000 baseline and the percentage increase for each occupational category. So obviously an economist wrote this, we we're taking something pretty easy to understand and making it sound really complicated. So what you see over on the left is information that would be presented to you. And then what you're going to do is to use this information to calculate the projected increase, which is gonna be the difference between these two numbers. And then you're also gonna calculate a percentage change. Now, if you've already gone into the Excel files that I have over in the file section, you'll already see the completed answer, but that's not really gonna help you in terms of knowing how to do this. So let me just show you just to make sure we're all on the same page. All right, so I'm gonna start with the first one. So I want the projected increase in let's say the number of scientists. So I'm gonna do is put in an equal, all right? And this is my biggest number where I'm gonna wind up. And from that, I'm gonna subtract the number where I started. All right, so that's gonna be a change or an increase of 2060. And then what we're going to do in terms of calculating our percentage increase, and if we come down here where we already see how this is done, all right, for life sciences, you can see that it's gonna be whatever your change is divided by whatever your original number was. So in the case of life sciences, scientists, excuse me, you're gonna take this change you're gonna wind up calculating and divide it by your original number. So if we come up here, we wanna do the same thing. We wanna take our change, which is 2060 that you just calculated. And again, just divide this by our original number and you should get 63.56%. Now it just so happens, depending on your familiarity with Excel, if it's not coming up as a percentage, you might need to go into format. And here we can see that this is set as percentage, but if somebody had say set it as a decimal or a number, you might actually have to change it to a percentage, but that doesn't have to be done here. So again, let's say I had not already given you all these answers and you wanted to go ahead and calculate this. Once you understand what you've done here, you can just copy this formula and essentially you're being asked to do the same thing with each one of these occupations. So that's where these numbers are coming from. And then finally, as you can see, for all occupations, there's a couple of different ways you could have done this. Here, we wrote the formula in such a way that we are looking at the change in all occupations, which is where that's coming from. Likewise, this percentage change is gonna be the change you calculated here divided by your original number. So that's it for question two. The next question I wanna take a quick look at is question three. Now, if we look at the information, you have a new graduate, they have a job with an annual salary of $60,000 and the salary is expected to rise by two and a half percent per year for the first five years. So, as you can see, we've got her starting salary right there. All right, and then that is the projected increase for the next five years. Again, this is already done for you, but what, we're, what we wanna do is to take a look and see what happens to her salary again over the next five years. So we're gonna presume that it starts out at $60,000 in year one. And then to go from year one to year two, we know we're gonna be getting $60,000 plus two and a half percent of $60,000. So the way we're gonna code that is to take this number 60,000 and multiply it by one plus whatever it is that's in cell B4. Yes, you could write two and a half percent, but you don't wanna do it that way because 
It might be you want to come back later. Maybe you find out it's going to be a bigger percentage increase or a smaller percentage increase. And if you wanted to change the numbers, all you'd have to do would be to change the number there. So again, in each one of these slots, then once you've gone through and made this calculation, all right, you could just, let's say we had not already done this. Again, if we came over here, again, we want to take the number that is in B6 and multiply it by one plus our projected growth rate, which we have in B4. So we've gotten that number. And now we can just copy it and we can see then what our projected will be for each particular year. So that's it for question three. If we skip on down to question five, and again, I am on page 45. Question five, ooh, this will be fun for you finance majors. We're looking at a return on investment, which is profit divided by investment. This is important in marketing as well. It's determined as incremental sales times gross margin minus marketing investment. And you get some other information. Let's say this company plans to spend $3 million to place search engine ads and expects $15 million in incremental sales. All right, so here we've got our incremental sales of 15 million. They're gonna spend 3 million. So that again is going to be that investment that they're making. And the problem goes on to tell you that the gross margin is expected to be 45%. So we wanna develop a spreadsheet, first of all, to compute the marketing return on investment. So if we come over here and we look at incremental sales that would be given, let's suppose incremental sales range between $10 million and $20 million. We are gonna calculate our marketing return on investment all right, we're going to do that by taking the amount that is in this cell, A10. We're going to multiply it by, you see, B4 minus B5. So again, B4, all right, is 45%. B5 is going to be that 3 million. And then we're going to be dividing by that as well. All right, and that's where 50% is coming from. And again, once you have this formula straight, you can just copy it into these remaining cells. If I move on to page, excuse me, problem six, let's say we are looking at the accounting professionals database. So here we've got this nice, exciting table right over here. And you are being asked to use Excel functions to find, first of all, the maximum number of years of service. Well, let's make sure we're looking at the correct columns. So as we look across all of this, all right, here's our years of service. And specifically, the, what the first question is asking us for is the maximum. So what we're going to do, the answers are down here, but I'm going to go ahead and answer this over here as well so you can see it. What I want is a maximum value. So I'm going to say equals max. And actually, I'm going to have to do that in a new cell. So I'm going to say equals max. Right? And you know you're doing it right when this window pops up. And so we want Excel to find us the biggest number in this particular column. So I'm going to highlight this range. Right, and hopefully we're going to see 31. Let's see if it worked. Oh my goodness, it did. Okay. So let's look at the next question. Right, we found the max. Now we're going to look at exactly the same column, but we want the average number of years of service. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say equal average. And again, you know you're doing it right when this pops up. All right, and again, let's highlight that same column. All right, and that's 14.7037. And if we come over here, yep, that's close enough. All right, so moving right along to part C. The number of male employees in the database. 
All right, so we are going to be working with a new column and it looks like the column of interest now is gonna be column B. All right, so let's take a look at how to do this. And if we come down here, we're gonna be using what's known as our count if function. And again, I think we're comfortable with how to differentiate a particular column, but you'll notice now, instead of looking for a number, we're looking for a particular letter. Again, we know that the observation is a male if we see an M. And what I just wanna make sure you notice is that you're gonna to need to put in double quotes around M because Excel kind of gets excited if it's looking at letters instead of looking at numbers. So again, just for practice, let's say equal count if. All right, make sure again, we're doing the correct column. All right, I'm gonna come over here and put in a comma and put in M and let's look. Oh no, I don't see the correct answer. What could be wrong? Well, remember, if you go back and look at the right answer, remember I told you Excel kind of flips out if we don't put in those double quotes. Now, if this doesn't work, you're gonna to get to see your professor flip out, but it won't be the first time. Let's see what happens. Oh my goodness me, it worked. All right, so let's move on to part D. Part D is the number of female employees who have a CPA. So we're gonna do pretty much the same thing. We're just gonna do it in a different column. So we look down here at part D and actually this is a little more complicated because you've got two things that need to be true at the same time. Again, if we look back at this, we want the number of employees and we want them to have a CPA. So if we come down here, You'll notice we're looking at column B4 through B30, and we're looking for an F, and you'll see another comma, and then looking at F4 through F30, and looking for a Y. So again, we're gonna have two count if situations going on at one time. So again, we're looking at B, I'm gonna highlight all of this. put in our comma, and then we're interested in females. And then we also wanna look at the CPA column. So we're gonna come over to column F, highlight all of that. And remember what we're interested in is seeing a Y. Oh, and I've entered too many arguments for this function. So let's take a look and see what your professor messed up. Okay, I may have gone down a little too far. So this is fun. You get to see all the different kinds of ways that you can make a mistake here. So I'm gonna to try to do the same thing again. Equal count if, again. I like this. Put in female. I like this. Oh, that's the graduate degree. Bad professor. Let's try that again. I want the CPA, but that could also be an interesting question. And then put in yes. Well, we're gonna have to work on that question some more. So it could be that I have too many spaces there. Let us move on to the next question and I'll go back and see about finding a fix for that. I think it has to do with the number of spaces that I had. 
If I move on to question nine, Question nine, the worksheet base data in the Excel file credit risk data provides information for 425 bank customers who've applied for loans. So, and there's all kinds of information here. The purpose of the loan, checking and saving account balances, I mean, all kinds of stuff. So to get to, to cut to the chase, we're gonna use the COUNTIF function to determine First of all, how many customers applied for new car, used car, business, education, small appliance, and furniture loans? And then secondly, the number of customers with checking account balances that are less than $500. So we're going to be looking at numerical answers, and we are going to be looking at text answers. So we've got a table over here. So again, we are going to set up loan purpose and Maybe we're interested in new car, used car, business, education, small appliance, and furniture. So again, this is all part one of our question. So we want to know how many of how many times we see the term new car come up in column A. So again, we're going to say count if. If I click it, you can see how we're highlighting that. And again, remember specifically what we're doing is we're going in there and we're looking for a new car, right? And when you do that, you see 104. And then basically you're gonna do the same thing for each one of these. Again, you're gonna highlight the same range, but now you're looking for used car, all right? And so you'll go through and continue doing this. If we go to part two of our question, we wanna look and see how many accounts have less than $500? Again, this is gonna be another count if function. And again, now we're gonna be looking at column B as you can see. So that's why that's highlighted. And what we're interested in, you'll notice after the comma, we've got our friendly double quotes again. And what, what we're looking for are all values that are less than $500. So we've got in again, the double quotes, the less than, and then 500. All right, and then once we do that, we can see that that is 312 customers. So there you have it. So um, we have completed this and I am hopefully gonna be able to save this and I hope you find this helpful. I will also try to go back and clean up the answer to question six a little bit. So you may see an additional video here. Bye-bye.